All right, it seems to be working. At first, I uh, I didn't think I was gonna have time for a, a Bible study tonight. Something that I need to uh, to attend to later on. But uh, I don't think this is a long study, so Lord willing, uh, we should be able to get it done within the uh, within a half hour. Can you guys hear me? Testing mic check. Yeah, I see Michael um, put a one up there. Okay. Let me open the document. I posted some of these verses on Facebook earlier. And we want to take a look at Isaiah 58, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. If you guys can't hear me, uh, can you guys hear me? Mic check. One, two, one, two. Just want to make sure that we have uh, sound. It looks good from my end. So it should be all right. All right, so Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. And we want to talk about the foot as well as the Sabbath. So let me post the, the heading. And not surprising, I think we're going to find, like a lot of other areas that we've looked at, that this is again talking about the body of Christ. We're looking at the person of Christ with the feet or the foot. Now, I remember again back with Family Radio uh, how Mr. Camping used to interpret this verse. And usually the focus is on the will, the hand, the foot. Uh, has to do with the will. Now that's, I think there's some degree of truth to that, but Lord willing, we'll see if we can uh, try to expand that a little more and pick up some additional uh, spiritual uh, meaning. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, now again, I think a lot of people, they look at this verse today and the holy day that's in view there is Sunday to them. Anyone, uh, any ideas as far as that is concerned? Is God talking about the, the day here that is Sunday? Is the main focus on uh, not doing certain things, certain activities on Sunday which many people have come to understand as being the Lord's day. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight. Now, what I'm trying to do here, first of all, looking at the word foot, and see if we can identify it with the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. Now, we know that for the most part, uh, every word in the Bible is relating back to Christ but then also in tribulation and judgment it becomes antichrist anyone disagree with that Psalm 31 verse 8 and hast thou not hast thou I'm sorry hast not shut up shut me up into the hand of the enemy uh Thou hast said my feet and a large room. I, I don't know if I'm missing something in that verse. Oh yeah, so God has not shut me up. Has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast said my feet and a large room. Now whose feet are in view there? Whose feet are in view? Can you see how this is speaking of the body of Christ? the believers in the Lord. Nahum chapter 1 verse 15 Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publisheth peace O Judah keep thy solemn feast. Now again I think this is the Sabbath that we need to be concerned with. Keeping the Sabbath is keeping Christ isn't it? It is keeping the solemn feast the solemn assembly. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 4 
and his feet shall stand in that day that's the same day that's in view there by the way I propose with uh, Isaiah 58 verse 13 my holy day it is the day of the Lord the day of judgment now on the salvation side his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem Psalm 66 verse 9 which holdeth our soul in life and suffereth not our feet to be moved suffereth not our feet to be moved now so if the feet now that's not talking about my feet or your feet if our feet is not moved it is that the believers are rooted in Christ they are rooted in Christ and so they have salvation can you see that Psalm 22 verse 16 for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have clo have enclosed me they pierced my hands and my feet so there it is again the hand the feet it is pointing back to Christ can you see that so it's not really talking about your will you know on a literal basis or literal side so that would force us to interpret these verses uh, carnally they pierced my hands and my feet we also read in uh, Psalm 18 verse 9 he bowed the heavens also and came down darkness was under his feet and I think we've talked about this before that darkness there is Babylon and it is God using Babylon and judgment right so darkness was under his feet so the feet ultimately again I believe is pointing to Christ Psalm 122 verse 2 our feet shall stand within thy gates O Jerusalem our feet so it is the believer standing in Christ so God uses members of the body the hand the foot uh, the eyes uh, the heart everything ultimately looking at the one body that is Christ any questions on this any questions so far we're looking at Isaiah 58 verse 13 if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath I'm trying to get a feel for what the Bible has to offer there so I think uh, hopefully we see that the foot in the Bible again is pointing to Christ what about the day and the Sabbath well again that would have to be pointing to Christ everything in the Bible if we think about it today by God's grace I think we come to understand we come to see that everything Christ is the Word of God so every word that we see in the Bible has some spiritual connection to Christ so the day and the Sabbath let's go back to Isaiah 58 verse 13 let me post that verse again if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath so what is this really saying what do you suppose is in view there does this have anything to do with me not doing something on Sunday or doing uh, other things on Sunday and then uh, calling Sunday the Lord's Day or the Holy Day the Sabbath that's how many people I think are looking at this verse but I think there's something more uh, more spiritual right because the foot right exactly Donna turn away from Christ precisely so that would be a command of the church not to fall away in the last days right it has to do with staying with the kingdom turning away our foot now notice it says thy foot because there is the feet of Christ and then there is the feet of Antichrist so anytime we're doing something out of our own will or our own pleasure uh, coming with a different gospel then in essence what we're doing is we're turning away from Christ so we're we're not staying we're not keeping the Sabbath which is Christ so excellent point 
Psalm 118 verse 24 this is the day the day is Christ this is the day which the Lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it so that's the language of salvation the believers they find joy in Christ and the day remember the Sabbath Exodus 20 verse 8 remember the Sabbath hold on remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy so God there again is commanding that those who call themselves Christians those who bear the name of Christ they must keep the Sabbath holy they're not to defile the Sabbath that is the day of God can you see that they're not to turn away they're not to fall away so that's the command again I believe to the church 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 verse 13 every man's work shall be made manifest for the day that's Christ in the day of the Lord it is Christ that reveals Antichrist remember yes exactly Donna remember Christ keep it holy don't defile the sanctuary don't defile the Sabbath every man's work shall be made manifest for the day that's the day of the Lord that is Christ shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire there we've uh, talked about in the past it is the mouth of God I'm sorry the voice of God and the mouth of false prophets God allowing Antichrist to come with a different gospel and that is the fire I will put my words in thy mouth I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Uh, all right, so any questions there? Any questions there? Looking at the day, the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Not talking about the seventh day Sabbath. Not talking about uh, Saturday. Or well, although God used that as a type in the Old Testament to point to the the rest that the believers find in Christ. So Christ. Um, he is the Sabbath and so there's no substance in the shadow there's no substance in the law the law I believe is made to represent Christ but then ultimately we find truth in the the substance the spiritual all right now what about uh, I mentioned uh, just now that our own feet now the church and tribulation and judgment becomes Antichrist it turns away from Christ our own feet polluting Christ in the Sabbath so it's not the will because if we talk about the will then that's something that we have control over right but it is God ultimately who is in charge of the uh, what happens in tribulation God allows Antichrist to multiply Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 30 for the children of Judah have done evil in my sight saith the Lord they have said their abominations in a house which is called by my name to pollute it see that's how they're not keeping the Sabbath they are polluting the Sabbath correct they are polluting the Sabbath and if they pollute the Sabbath then they pollute the day of the Lord they're not uh, they're allowing their own feet to be a part of the uh, of the kingdom so they have said their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it Ezekiel 16 verse 25 thou hast built a high place at every head of the way and hast made thy beauty to be honored I'm sorry to be aboard and has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by and multiplied thy whoredoms. So you see it again? The whole idea of uh, those who belong to Christ, their feet, their gospel, their uh, idea of Christ, has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by and multiplied thy whoredoms. So the feet there is tied into whoredoms when the church comes into the great tribulation Isaiah 59 verse 7 their feet run to evil 
Now again, it's it's the gospel that they bring. It's not the f it's not the feet of Christ, but it is the feet of Antichrist. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Now that is the primary uh, that that's the main focus of the Great Tribulation. It is a time when the body of Christ is killed. The two witnesses are killed. And they are killed, not by the outside world, but they're killed by whom? Who are the ones who destroy the body? Fear not them which kill the body. Any thoughts? Who are the ones who kill the body of Christ? Remember the time cometh that whosoever killeth you... The believers, they're driven out, they cut they, they're out of the synagogue, and whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. So even the uh, the whole the nature of the tribulation is the death of the the death I'm sorry, the death of the body. The death of Christ, the death of the two witnesses. Yeah, precisely, Michael, it is Babylon, the unsaved church, the unsaved body. They are the ones, their feet run to evil. Right, exactly, Don. False gospels that kills, precisely. It kills the body in that there is no salvation. There is no, um, God is separating the wheat from the tares, and God is not revealing truth to the unsaved body. And so they end up killing each other. Isaiah 23, verse 7. Notice the connection here again. Is this your joyous city whose antiquity is of ancient days? Her own feet, her own feet shall carry her after, I'm sorry, afar off to sojourn. And notice the language here carefully. It is her own feet. So this, I, I believe, ties into the, to the, uh, the, the idea that it is Babylon that destroys Babylon. It is the, the blind that, that lead the blind. The dead bury the dead. So they are taken in their own snare. Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. Right, her own Christ. Job chapter 18 verse 8. For he is cast into a net by his own feet. By his own feet. Not the feet of Christ but by the feet of Antichrist. And he walketh upon a snare. And a snare. Remember the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. As a snare shall it come upon all upon them that dwell upon the face of the earth. So the snare is Babylon, right? It is the, the false prophets that God is allowing to destroy the body. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 5. Her feet go down to death. And death again there I propose is Babylon. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Okay, so can we see a beautiful uh, harmony, Lord willing? We see the, the, the foot there or the feet identifying with the body of Christ. And there are those, they, they use their own feet. In other words, they come with a different gospel, a different Christ, to destroy the body. Now, turning away our foot from the Sabbath, turning away our foot, not polluting Christ with false gospels. Not polluting Christ. So let's go back to Isaiah 58 again. Let me post that verse as a reminder. If thou turn away thy foot, from the Sabbath. So what is the command there? Is this telling you, uh, giving you uh, an indication or what to do, what not to do on Sunday? Yeah, morally there, there's uh, there's a tie in there, I believe. But no, that, that's not talking about that at all. Uh, more importantly, it is the, the substance of having salvation, having Christ. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, so you're not to pollute the Sabbath. On my holy day, Christ is the day. 
Isaiah 56 verse 2 to look at some uh, salvation verses. We read here, uh, Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. How does the church pollute the Sabbath? By embracing a false Christ. By submitting to Antichrist. So that's how they no longer keep the Sabbath. They're not turning away their foot from the Sabbath. We also read uh, Isaiah 56 verse 4. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath. And only the believers keep the Sabbath. Not because they're trying to show people or show others that they're more righteous by keeping the law, by obeying the law. No. That's not how we keep the Sabbath. And choose the things that please me. They choose Christ. Christ is the pleasure of God. Again, everything I propose is pointing to Christ. Keep thy foot. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. So there it is again. Either you're keeping the Sabbath or you are offering sacrifice of fools. In other words, a different gospel. Any questions on that? Notice the, the similarity there in the language. Keep thy foot, keep thy foot from my holy day. Ezekiel 29 verse 11. No foot. Now, this is what happens, I believe, when God is separating the wheat from the tares. No strangers are coming through anymore. No foot of man, in other words, no antichrist, no foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it. You see that? Ezekiel 37, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. Can you see how this verse now makes sense? Now they're standing on the feet. They're standing on Christ, on the sure foundation. So they stand upon their feet. Psalm 119.59 I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. So that's keeping or keeping our foot from the Sabbath. That's turning away our foot from the Sabbath by turning to Christ. I turn my feet unto thy testimonies. Ezekiel 24, verse 17. Forbear to cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So there it is again. The whole point, the whole idea of uh, not keeping the Sabbath or not turning our foot from the Sabbath, it has to do with the bread of men, eating the bread of men. So the command here is not to eat the bread of men, not to turn away from Christ. We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. Remember that verse? So the believers, they want to make sure they eat the bread that is Christ and not the bread of Antichrist. Mark 9.45 And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life, enter half, I'm sorry, halt into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell. Now this again, you know, the believers, wheat and tares are growing together. This uh, dismemberment uh, of the body I propose it is the separation of wheat and tares. If thy foot offend thee, if, if you're going after another gospel, then you're best to cut it off, and now you be, you're be you missing a part of the body. So the believers, they come into uh, salvation. They come, God redeems the body, he brings back its captivity, even though now it is halted, it is maimed, it is missing a part of the body. 
And that's probably why, you know, when Christ was on earth, remember all the miracles he did? Imagine how many people were blind, they, they were missing an arm, they were missing a leg. Isn't that amazing how God worked that out so that all these people would be there and then Christ would heal them? And that would be a picture of the salvation that the believers find in Christ. So the body is halted, the body, uh, the, uh, you know, a part of the body is missing, but yet God makes it whole. So there is a language of salvation. Psalm 31, verse 8. And has not shut, has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. I'm not sure if I posted that verse earlier, but same thing is in view. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Salvation. But as for me, Psalm 73, verse 2. My feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. And when did that happen? When do you suppose? Can anyone think of uh, the time period when this might be uh, applied to? My feet were almost gone on a spiritual level, on a corporate level. What comes to mind? When was it that the believers somehow they they came close to death? My Christ! Can you elaborate on that, Donna? Uh, what I'm what I'm asking is, what time period do you think is in view? When the believers they were almost gone my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped what time period that were the believers they were pretty shaky yeah exactly Michael and tribulation yeah because judgment begins at the house of God God brought judgment on the whole body the believers included. So they were, um, I'm thinking of a couple of verses, but I don't remember the exact reference. They came very close to death. God allowing them, God bringing the third part through the fire. That's why, you know, the believers had no clue of what the, the, the tribulation was about, the nature of the tribulation, because they were a part of it. They were... Uh, they were under the wrath of God corporately, the, the whole body was. And then God, uh, at the time appointed, He began the separation, He began to unseal the Bible so that uh, the believers would understand the, the true nature of the judgment and therefore are able to come out of Babylon. Isn't that amazing? So that's what I think is in view there. So the, the reference to my feet, it is the, the believers in Christ. Okay, uh, in the last verse, Ezekiel 39, verse 7, Michael writes, It was an unseen event that comes unawares on the body. Yes, amen. But of that day now we knoweth no man. Yeah, the believers did not have a clue as to the tribulation, the, 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 the horrible tribulation that came, the darkness that came on the body. When God forsook the church and allowed Antichrist now to, to dominate, the scene where evil now is good and good becomes evil and the believers uh, you know I, I'm sure you can think of a lot of different doctrines that they uh, we embraced or they they thought they understood what the Bible is teaching and unfortunately even today there are many that are clinging or holding on to a carnal uh, interpretation or understanding of the Bible and therefore they stay with uh, you know whether it's a calendar or uh, different elements of the of the timeline looking for a literal manifestation of Christ but as long as if, if, if that's all we can see if, if we keep doing that then of course the the nature of the tribulation the nature of the judgment remains unseen 
So I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people of Israel. And will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. So can you see how this is the language of redemption? Separation of wheat and tares. God unseals the Bible. Brings back the captivity of the elect. Alright, here's a conclusion. And then we can open for a, a short time of discussion. So the foot being a part of the body of Christ would seem to relate to the kingdom of God and therefore following our our own foot would be lusting after a different Christ. In contrast, turning our foot from the Sabbath would be pointing to the redemption of the body at the revelation of Christ because he is also the Sabbath. So the church pollutes the Sabbath in tribulation and the elect do not. Okay, hold on one second.